effluent of very low radioactivity was to be discharged into the sea under strictly controlled conditions. But before this could be authorized, a complete survey of the local tides and currents had to be made to ensure that no contamination of the coastline was possible. Operation Squirt, as this survey was known, started with a floating out to sea of a temporary pipeline. This ran back to an old farmhouse on the shore, which had been converted into a laboratory compound where a storage tank of mildly radioactive liquor had been built. Water from a nearby stream was pumped through the pipeline into the compound, where the radioactive tracer was mixed with it and pumped out to sea. Though the amount of activity could be detected by instruments, it was not high enough to cause any hazard. This operation was carried out over a period that covered all conditions of time and tide. The movement of the radioactive tracer was checked by samples taken at sea and also on the shore. This survey established the length of the pipeline that would be needed to give a safe discharge of effluent, but because of the force of the tides and the nature of the seabed, the actual pipeline had to be laid in a tunnel. At the cliff edge, a vertical shaft was sunk 200 feet deep, from the bottom of which the tunnel was to be driven out 2,000 feet under the sea. Some distance away, an edit 600 feet long was driven down a slope of one in three to join the tunnel workings. Every foot of the way had to be blasted and the face was advanced in five foot steps. Time was valuable, and the work went on in shifts, day and night. In any case, it was always night below. After each blow, a pulley was fixed to the newly exposed face to carry the line for the rocker shovel for the removal of debris. Empty tunnel skips from the surface were sent down the edit on the two-foot gauge track and brought into position under the slusher. The shovel was then put to work to clear the debris from the rock face. Dump it on the slusher and from there to the skip. While the edit was being driven, work on the tunnel was progressing and when the two met, the disposal of debris was speeded up by a two-way system of skips, empty skips down the edit and full ones up the shaft. Water seeped through constantly and some 20,000 gallons an hour had to be pumped out. When the tunnel was complete, the effluent pipes would be laid through the edit and along the tunnel to a chamber at the end from where the discharge pipes will pass upwards through the rock to the sea 70 to 80 feet above.